How's it going everyone, it's Gadgets Boy. Welcome to another video. In this one, we're gonna be taking a look at this budget device from Poco. It's the Poco C40. Let's take a look. So, here's the box itself, and we're gonna go through this and unbox this. So this is the four gig RAM with the 64 gig internal uh, storage edition. And uh, it comes in this nice yellow box, which I quite like. Everyone knows I love yellow. Let's get inside the box. We are greeted with a device straight away. It does have some uh, specifications written on the front. So we do have a 6.71 inch dot drop display. It's a 720 plus display. It's got Corning Gorilla Glass. It's got a big 6,000 million power battery in there, which is a lot. And it, su it supports 18 watts fast charging. You have 30 meg megapixel dual camera settings there and uh, also high performance octa-core processor. We go through that more uh, once again in the device, but we just remove that for now. And uh, on the back, we can see the camera setup and uh, Paco logo on the back. It's got this nice sort of fake leather finishing, which is pretty cool. I don't mind it at all. And elsewhere in the box, we get a SIM ejector tool, which is this little guy here. Really nice. Don't lose that. You're going to need that to get inside your SIM, SIM card tray. And we also have some use your manual quick start guide, safety information, or the usual uh, booklets that you get inside smartphone. Uh, packaging these days so all there for you and then here we have a USB cable which is a full USB to USB-C cable for charging and data transfer the usual again and also a power brick here so this is a 10 watt power brick let's have a look yes 10 watt power brick um, so that will help you charge it a tad bit quickly quickly uh, it's a 6,000 milliamp hour battery in there so I'm not sure if that's fast enough Having said that though, this does support 18 watts faster charge. So if you have an 18 watt uh, charging brick, you can also use that and get this pumping uh, as uh, faster than the actual brick that comes in the box. Uh, so uh, we're just gonna take this SIM card tray out here. So you can see that this is a dual SIM uh, setup. So we have, <laughs> this is a big tray. <laughs> I haven't seen one of these uh, in a long time. So we do have, one and two there in terms of uh, your SIM card tray and you can also put a micro SD card on that far end of the actual tray itself. But yeah, that's interesting. I haven't seen that uh, in the phone in a long time. And uh, uh, the, I just put that back in there without breaking it. There we go, it just sits flush in there. Your fingerprint sensor is on the back there, but this is quite a fingerprint magnet area here. So the more you do it, the more you will get fingerprint all over it. Uh, on the bottom there we have a USB-C port, your speaker grill, and that's a microphone uh, right at the bottom there. And then if we look up top, we have your 3.5mm headphone jack, although there's no headphones in the box, so do bear that in mind. And then on the right side we have a power button and your volume rocker. They attach together, but it does have a nice clicky feedback to it as well. It's kind of slim, slim profile. It's not too thick, it's not bulky. It feels pretty smart in hand, but I'm still impressed that they've managed to stick a 6,000 milliamp hour battery in here. And that is a five megapixel camera at f2.2. The front camera, we'll go through that once we power it on and see what that's capable of in terms of what it can record, whether it's full HD, whether it's 4K, we don't know that yet. So this is the first time you're seeing it. It's the first time I'm seeing it. It's a first unboxing and first impressions uh, and a quick tour of what the device is all about. While that's powering on, this is IP52 water and dust resistant, and it runs on a GLQ GR510 processor. So the CPU now has an octa-core CPU up to two gigahertz, and you have a Mali G52 graphics in there. If that's, uh, if that's gonna deter people away from it, I don't know yet. I mean, I would have preferred something like a MediaTek uh, processor in there, but that's some sort of way to keep the cost price down, uh, I'd assume. So let's just go through the settings, United Kingdom, setting region. Already with most uh, phones that are coming in this budget sort of uh, level, you do, notice, you do notice some compromise when it comes to the vibrator motor. And uh, already just typing on this, putting the password into the Wi-Fi area, I can feel that sort of vibration that feels quite cheap. Uh, it doesn't feel as solid as you would a higher end smartphone that costs a lot more than this. As mentioned, you can use your fingerprint to unlock the device, but you can also opt just to have a screen lock with a pin code or whatever you wanna do. Uh, but here we're gonna do fingerprint so we can actually see how well that works as well. So we can choose a base security system via pattern, pin or password. Uh, we do pin, we have to wait for the little countdown for remembering your password, and then got it. And then here we can set up what we wanna use. I just put one, two, three, four for now. Confirm it again. 
and here we are. And then we do the setup process using the fingerprint uh, on the back. There we go, do different sides. And that is now successfully added. So we just click done. Got some more things to click there. Agree, accept cookies. Setup is complete. Now we can go into the device itself. So Poco has always usually set out to create devices that offer all the usual things that you'd really need, like good battery life, a good amount of uh, cameras on there, whilst setting the device as low as possible in terms of how much it will actually cost you to buy. So you know when you see something like a Poco device, you know that you're gonna be getting a lot of features for your device, for your buck, which is really good. And so whilst we're setting this up, this is the Power Black color version. There's also a coral green, and you can also get the Poco yellow, which looks fantastic. I think I shared that before uh, on uh, my social media, so you guys would have seen that. So we do have the three gigabytes and the 32 gigabytes option, or you can opt for the four gigabytes and 64 gigabytes uh, version that we've got here. And that micro SD card slot that we looked at earlier will support up to one terabyte. So you can have a big storage in here. So maybe perhaps go for the three gig version and, and just expand it as you wish to do so. Okay, so all the apps are fully loaded now so we can run through, uh, have a quick tour of the device itself. So dragging the top right of the corner uh, of the screen will give you your quick uh, settings options. So like going to airplane mode and all that kind of stuff will be there. You can adjust brightness as well so you can see how bright this goes and the lowest of the brightness as well level. We're gonna keep it right at the top of the brightness level for now. And uh, also in there is where you can go uh, into settings. You can also edit what you see on that quick menu options as well. We'll come back to the settings shortly. And then if we drag from the left side of the screen, we'll see all our notifications, uh, which you can quickly just clear them. And as you can see, that is installed in some more applications from the Google Play Store. We we'll press that to go back to the main screen and you can scroll across and have more applications going across. And what you notice straight away is, away is we do have some bloatware already on here. Uh, so if we go to games, for example, you get some preloaded games on here, which I'm not sure everyone wants to play. Um, you've got more applications as well that's also pre-installed, things like TikTok, Facebook, and so on. But hopefully you'll be able to remove some of these, like Agoda, perhaps. Let's press that. It doesn't give you the option to remove it. How about Spotify? Let's go Info. And we should be able to uninstall that right at the bottom there. Perhaps we can do that with this as well. We go back here, App Info. And yes, we do have the option to uninstall it, which is good because you might not want all those applications. Going up, you see more apps, apps there as well. So we've got things like AliExpress. We also have the two Poco app here, uh, Poco Community and Poco Store. I don't, I'm not sure why that's there in this day and age, but it's there. But it's also segmented into things like your communication, uh, so you can quickly go into things. So you've got entertainment, you've got photography, so you can quickly go into different types of applications that are installed on here. You can also just swipe across as well. You don't have to tap at the top to do that. You can also modify the apps in those uh, segments, in those areas there. So in settings, first thing, if you're going to about phone, we do have that MIUI version, which is the 13, uh, which is stable, which is for, for the Poco device. Storage options there, you can see you've got Android version. All the specs can also be viewed if you tap this. So it tells you about the processor, the RAM available, and Android 11 updates, etc. cetera. Uh, we can also uh, look at things like storage. So if we tap storage, it tells you what's there. You can deep clean it, you can see what's been installed and all that quick information that we usually see in Android phones. Go back out completely. We can go into our display settings. I'm always intrigued to see what's there. By the way, this is 4G, it's not 5G ready, so do bear that in mind. You'd have the light mode and dark mode options available, brightness mode, text size. Um, there's no option to change things like your refresh rate on this, which is pretty much a basic refresh rate. So again, this is not actually fully aimed at gamers, but it's more of a budget device for those looking to spend as little as possible while still getting all the basic things uh, to the maximum level it can be. So you do have your uh, dual camera set up on there, for example, which is a 13 megapixel. You have a good front facing camera at five megapixel, corner in the glass, 18 watt fast charge support. And again, that 6,000 milliamp hour battery is a whole lot of battery spec there. We go back out and see what else is here. We do have sound and vibration. And you can see that things are a bit slow as well. This is where the processor comes in. Sometimes you tap things and it might take just a couple of seconds to actually go into what you needed to go to. Uh, additional settings, nothing there. Sound effects, see what I mean? It takes just a tad bit time to 
go into the next bit. Nothing really there apart from equaliser, so you can adjust that once you've pressed, uh, once you've inserted your headphone through that 3.5mm headphone jack. We go all the way down, you've got wallpaper options, so you can change your wallpaper to some of the preloaded ones on there. Again, takes a bit of time to come through there. We have live wallpaper option available, which is cool. Some people love live wallpaper. It's not something that I usually do. It's not really for me, but it's there if that's something you want to do. We've already gone through password and security. You can use um, your fingerprint to get into the device um, as we've seen at the start. So we come back out of that one. See battery options there. So you can see your battery usage, but well, yeah, 6,000 million power battery uh, is a whole, lot, a whole lot of battery there <laughs> to use for sure. That's it for the settings. If you go into camera, which looks a bit like Google Chrome uh, logo there, uh, we can also see what options are available. Um, just click that. So this is a 13 megapixel uh, main camera, which gives you f2.2 aperture. There's also a two megapixel depth camera on there, which will give you f2.4 aperture. Uh, if we go into settings here, we can see what options are available. So we can record in different aspect ratio, as you can see there. Uh, if we go to, uh, go to settings for photo, you can see picture quality settings there. You can use high, standard and low, um, but not much option there. There's, there is anti-banding settings here, interestingly, up to 60 hertz, or you can set it at auto. Uh, but if we go into video, which I know you guys will be interested in, we can click our menu option there. You can see that we can shoot at up to 1080p, uh, if we click that, 1080p or 720p, both at 30 frames per second maximum. Again, you get the basic, it's still pretty cool for uh, putting things up onto Facebook or Instagram, if that's something you want to do. You can see all the fingerprint just uh, plaguing the device here. We have Pro Mode available, which is interesting again for a budget device. You can do things like your shutter speed and so on. We've got Portrait Mode, and that's something that they shout about as well, is the fact that you do get Night Mode with this. And you've got short videos as well to be able to upload things like your Instagram stories, which is absolutely fine. If you go back to photo, and uh, we can switch the camera around to ourselves. <laughs> you can see me there. Uh, it's not the best quality looking one here. It's very, uh, oh God. Yeah, it's not the best looking one there, but it's there if you want to take a selfie. Uh, so you do get five megapixels there for all your selfie options. But that's pretty much it for the quick tour, unboxing and just the first impression to show what the device is about. It's not the fastest, uh, of devices that I've seen due to that processor that they've used, I believe. And uh, it, do, it does have dual um, uh, SIM card support and a micro SD card expansion slot. And I know I, I keep mentioning it, you do get 6,000 milliamp hour battery, which, which is a whole lot of battery life there. That should last you a day and then some. And when it comes to video quality, as you can see there, the video quality actually looks fantastic uh, when you play the right resolution. So if you try and play 4K videos on here, you start to see where it falls short because it's not 4K display, but if you play something at 720p, as you can see here, or even at 1080p, then it works completely fine. It's got nice uh, viewing angles, but you do get this big chin at the bottom of it, which uh, I'm not a big fan of. And that dew drop display or whatever they called it, I think it's called dot drop display, does come into uh, your space in terms of real the screens, uh, real estate. Um, so do bear that in mind. I'll just show you guys what, what it looks like if we try and play um, a 4K, uh, video. So if you go advanced, do all the way up at 60 frames. It's not too bad. You just start juddering as you can see there. It's not as, as smooth as it was when we were playing 1080p. Uh, so it's probably best uh, to sit that back uh, down to 1080p there so we can get a better uh, viewing experience when it comes to the Poco C40. I think all in all, it's a great entry level budget device in my opinion. Um, there are other alternatives on the market that you can consider that as uh, more notable processors in there that probably would load faster and have less uh, slow speeds in some areas. But that's something to consider when you're looking around. And that's it for the Poco C40. Guys, as always, let me know what you think in the comments below. Is this something you would buy? Does 6,000 million power battery sway your decision? Let me know in the comments below. I'll leave all relevant links in the description area, so do check it out if you want to do further research of your own. But in the meantime, please do subscribe, hit the bell notification so you get notified every time there's a new smartphone uh, video up on the channel. And there's plenty more videos on the channel to check out, so do check them out uh, as well. But in the meantime, don't forget to like, share, and I'll see you in the next one.